Good afternoon my friends and hello from the Universal Orlando Resort. It has been a minute since I've been here. It feels so good to be back. There's just a special vibe about Universal that I really enjoy. There's a lot going on, especially inside of Universal Studios Florida. A lot of park updates, plus right now is the peak of spring break and this place is packed, but that's not gonna stop me from having a good day. I hope you guys are ready because I am. Let's go do this. All right, as I'm walking through City Walk, I wanted to give you a quick update on the former home of the Universal Legacy Store. This will be the upcoming Epic Universe Preview Center, which we are all very excited about. And speaking of Epic Universe, look what Universal just posted all over their social media accounts. 32824. Obviously, this is a date that's happening this week. I personally think they're going to announce something, maybe the official opening date. We'll see. Maybe it has to do with the preview center. I will say based on what I'm seeing right now regarding the Epic Universe Preview Center, I don't think this is going to open anytime soon. I mean, I don't know what's happening inside, but from the outside, it still looks like they have a ways to go. Kung Fu Panda 4 signage has taken over the movie theater front entrance here and the Mardi Gras tree is still hanging on. It is good to see the Universal Globe rotating once again as I'm heading inside of Universal Studios Florida now. Universal has placed a photographer back in this spot. Let me tell you, this makes a wonderful photo right here. Mardi Gras is still taking place. It's running until April 7th. I have made it inside of the park and before I forget, as I was going through security after I parked my car, I was asked to take off my belt, which has never happened here at Universal. I just wanted you guys to know that way you can be prepared. Walking through Minion Land, and I wanted to point out over here at Illumination's Villain Con Minion Blast, this attraction is sitting at a 45 minute wait. I don't think I've ever seen this attraction have a 45 minute wait, which is a good thing. And then over here at Minion Mayhem, this attraction is sitting at a 60 minute wait. There's Rip Ride Rocket, it just dropped. Check this out. This is how you know it's spring break, when people are just chilling on the lawn in front of the stage. That's just how busy the park is. And then look at the concession stand right here. This is the line to get popcorn. Oh my goodness, look at this line for Rip Ride Rocket. I have never seen it this long before. Well, this makes sense. It has a 100 minute standby wait. Holy moly, I just went up to the Universal Express booth. I was curious, I asked the team member, how much is the two park unlimited pass going for today? $372 plus tax per person. Woo. And keep in mind, if you stay at any of the Universal Premier Hotels, Hard Rock, Portofino Bay, World Pacific, you get unlimited express included for everybody in your room for every day of your visit. It's a no-brainer. Right now, Race Through New York has a 35-minute wait. Passing by one of my favorite rides in this park, Revenge of the Mummy. Right now, standby is sitting at a 65-minute wait, and the single rider queue is open. I do have some news regarding this attraction. If you're visiting Universal anywhere from June 17th through June 22nd, 2024, Revenge of the Mummy will be down receiving a refurbishment. Would you look at this? We have a lot of action happening right now inside of the lagoon. A lot of team members are out working. Now, we have seen Universal testing drones. We have footage, it's online. It's always been the rumor that Universal would be using drones during the new nighttime entertainment show. And again, Universal has not confirmed anything, but we're hoping we get some kind of announcement soon because I mean, look at all this. It's getting ready. It's getting very close. This has been very interesting to watch as progress has happened. I noticed this area on the left-hand side of the Starbucks location is closed off. I don't know what this could be, but if I had to guess, maybe this is where the sound people will be, where they control everything. Not 100% sure. Oh, it looks like you can still walk this way. Oh no, it looks like this is no longer a pathway. You just have a few tables 
for Starbucks right there. But then there's more construction walls right here. I don't know. Maybe it's just lighting and adding new equipment all around the lagoon. And those are indeed new fountains right there. So these platforms, once they're done, will go completely under the water here. Well, the park can't be that full because right here at Fast and Furious Supercharged, this attraction only has a 25 minute standby wait. The big rumor on the street regarding Alcatraz, this bar will be closing down here shortly after Mardi Gras and it will be receiving a huge refurbishment because this bar makes Universal a lot of money throughout the year. I just spoke with Murph, one of the awesome bartenders here at Alcatraz. This is going to be closing down on April 6th, and on April 7th, this bar will be moving to the Bloody Mary tent, which will just be right here in front of Alcatraz. So you can still come see these awesome bartenders, get your favorite drinks because I love this bar. They have a very heavy hand at this bar and also over at Finnegan's, two of my favorite spots to get any kind of adult beverages. And then over here, this is going to be closed for nearly three months, receiving a huge refurbishment. King's Cross is sitting at a 35 minute wait currently, not too bad, and this is the Hogwarts Express, which will take you back and forth in between Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade. You just have to have a two park ticket to enjoy the Hogwarts Express. Heading inside of Diagon Alley. Ooh, it's busy. But this is normal. This is pretty much every single day. Everyone is waiting around to see the dragon breathe fire. I did want to mention something that Universal has been doing inside of the Wizarding World. They have been adding even more butterbeer treats around Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. I'm going to head inside of Sugar Plums to see if I can find any. They do have something. This is the butterbeer caramel. It's pretty big. Check it out. That's the only new thing that I am seeing. You know what? Let's get it. Let's give it a try. Ooh, this pumpkin pastry looks kind of good too. Side note, the air conditioning feels so good in here. Mission accomplished. Let's go give it a try. Here's a better look at what this treat looks like. I believe it's just a white chocolate covered piece of caramel, caramel, whichever one you call it. I know people say it either way and it has the Butterbeer logo on top there. Here's what the inside looks like. It's good. I like it a lot. I think if you're a fan of caramel, you're going to really enjoy this treat. It was quite sweet, a little too sweet for my liking, but it was good. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I got it. I did taste a hint of that Butterbeer flavor. I wish it was a little more heavy on the butterbeer flavor because I got a little bit of that, but the just overall taste of caramel overthrew that taste of butterbeer. But all around it was good. I recommend it. I don't know if I would get it again, but I'm really glad that Universal is experimenting a lot more with their butterbeer and just their overall food and beverage options. Currently, Escape from Green Gods is sitting at a 55 minute wait. This is my cue to leave Diagon Alley because it is just way too crowded in here for me. Walking by the former home of Fear Factor Live, rumors have started up again regarding what Universal is going to do with this area. We believe Universal will be knocking this entire stage down and replacing it with something else. The first big rumor, and I don't even think this is a rumor anymore, but the big rumor was they were going to expand the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley, right there and build another attraction in this area. But now, rumors are saying something else. I'm not going to speak on the current rumor because I don't think anybody really knows. Hopefully, Universal will announce something soon. Man in Black is sitting at a 35 minute wait. That's the exit of Man in Black, alien attack right there. You will exit through the gift store. I'm right over here because I have a little bit of Halloween Horror Nights news. Universal did build two new tent locations back in this direction. I have a feeling it's going to be a really good year. We're still waiting on our first big announcement for the 2024 season. Come on, Five Nights at Freddy's. Walking through Krusty Land, and we believe Universal will be closing this down at the end of this year. 
to make room for a Pokemon experience. And you know, Disney owns The Simpsons now, so it just makes sense. It is 1 p.m. right now, and my biggest tip, I know I say this all of the time, try not to have lunch during the peak hours. Try to wait at least till 2.30, 3 o'clock because the lines will start to die down. And there is a queue to get inside of here. There's a line to eat because it's peak lunch time right now. Oh my goodness, it's still going. It's not done. That's the end of the line. And look at the line for tacos. Holy moly. I've been noticing as I've been walking around the park today, as I'm passing by the Mardi Gras food booth locations, there's no line for the booths, but there's lines for everything else food and beverage related. Interesting. Coming up on DreamWorks land, and we have a lot to discuss because Universal confirmed everything that's coming to this expansion for the kiddos, which is very much needed because a common complaint that I would always hear from you guys about Universal, they don't have enough for little children. Well, now they do this summer. Coming from Universal, as soon as guests step into the spectacular new land, the vivid world and imagination of DreamWorks animation will surround them as they embark on exciting adventures, like exploring Shrek's swamp just outside of his 35 foot tall cottage, taking a ride on a dazzling troller coaster, interacting with Poe and the Panda Village and meeting favorite characters like Gabby from Gabby's Dollhouse. Guests will also discover unique treats, photo ops, interactive play areas, splash pads, and entertainment offerings themed to popular DreamWorks stories and characters. Here's what we can see. I mean, Shrek's cottage pretty much looks completely done. There's the troller coaster. It has been seen testing. I hope I get to see it today, but it probably won't happen. And then we can see Gabby's dollhouse right here. And we can see a little bit of the playground area. It's looking really good. I feel like this is going to be so good for the children. Something for them to do. Not only is this going to be great for the children, but also for any foodies out there. Universal is bringing a lot of new treats and beverages to DreamWorks land that I'm really excited about. And here's what I can see from this angle. We can see a little bit more. I know there is a statue of Poppy and Branch right here front and center. I think this is going to open here very soon. Maybe in May, June definitely before the 4th of July. I see they have added a lot of trees back here to separate the back of Shrek's cottage to the front of ET right here. I will also put a aerial view from Bio Reconstruct on X. That way you can see what it looks like from a bird's eye. We have another ride closure to talk about. If you're visiting Universal anytime between May 6th through May 15th, 2024, ET Adventure will be closed to receive a refurbishment. Universal has also added some new signage around the construction walls here of DreamWorks land. And I just wanted to mention this. I know it may seem like that Universal is doing a lot as far as ride closures and just closing things around the park. I feel like Universal is doing this now because once Epic Universe opens next year, and remember, it's opening next year. This year is flying by. Universal is expecting a lot of guests and they just want to make sure all of their parks are in really good condition because they know they're going to be seeing a lot of first-time families here at Universal and you just have to appreciate that this company is doing this unlike some other companies that we know and may love but I just wanted to throw that out there I've been seeing like a common complaint that Universal should lower their prices because they're closing so much they're not closing so much. They're just doing a lot now, that way they don't have to later. Some really good news since the last time I was here, Mel's Drive-In has officially reopened and it looks great. Of course, there is a long line to get in right now because it is still lunchtime during spring break. It is what it is, but it's good to see that this quick service location has finally reopened. I am inside, a team member let me in. I wanted to show you a quick look at their new menu. Of course, they have desserts. Oh my gosh, that strawberry lemon dessert looks so good. Freshly made pies, milkshakes. They have a vegan 
chili dog. And here's what the breast looks like here inside. The jukebox has returned. I love the retro plastic feel in here. It is so good to see this place back in action. I am now inside of the Five and Dime store. I'm not seeing any kind of new merchandise, but I feel like our first big Halloween Horror Nights house announcement for 2024 is right around the corner any day now. Also, the monster makeup experience is not operating anymore for now. Apparently this was just a test run. Oh, and something else that is recently new here, Universal redid their app. So it's even easier to use now. I wanted to try to have lunch at Mel's Drive-In, but with that line, it's just not worth it to me. And I say it's not worth it to me just because as a local, I know I can always come back and I live down the road so I can just go have lunch at home. I couldn't even place a mobile order right now because of how crowded the park is. Because again, it's during that prime lunch period. So we'll just save that for a different day. I think I have pretty much covered everything from inside of Universal Studios Florida. I would go over to Islands, but I actually have a challenge video that I have upcoming. So I'm gonna save that part for that video. But let's wander around a little bit longer and let's go check out the main gift store at the end. There's Victor out having a meet and greet. The Transformers are not out right now because it is pretty windy outside at the moment as the team members are outside testing the wind right now. I will say, Mel's smells so good as you walk by. Beetlejuice is out having a meet and greet on the trash can right now. <laughs> That's cool. Only at Universal. I wonder if he's ready to promote Beetlejuice 2. Okay, let's have a quick walkthrough of the Universal Studios store here at the front of the park to see if I can find any new Universal merchandise. Ooh, as soon as you enter the store, Universal has placed a brand new Visa credit card display here at the front of the park. Are you guys open now? Yes, we are. Oh my goodness gracious. When you apply, you get gift cards. Oh my gosh. And two of these. Two of these? What are the uh, rewards for it? Let's see here. 4% back? 4% back. 2% back. Travel, gas, dining, and 1% everything else. And 99 annual fee. I don't, I don't need one right now. I'm trying to buy a house, but after the house, Okay. We can uh, maybe talk about it. Okay. <laughs> this Butterbeer coffee mug is pretty cool. $25. I found the newest Universal t-shirts here. This is nice. They're like patches of the different areas around the parks. This is $30. No two shirts are exactly alike. Nothing on the back. They are very soft. They have kid sizes as well. They have matching coasters. I love these glass mugs here. Dang, I really like this blue tie-dye one. That's very nice. These are very, very soft. They have matching towels, fans for $18. Of course, they are selling the actual patches, matching socks. They have a hoodie as well. That's the front and that's the back. And then they have a photo album. Oh, and they have autograph books. Is this the first actual Universal autograph book or have they made these before? $15 comes with a pen. Good job Universal, I'm glad you have these. They also have a matching coffee mug. This is $22 and then they have a blanket as well. I keep finding more and more new merchandise. They have this backpack and I like the material because it's like water resistant. So it feels like it will protect anything that's inside, which is very nice. This is $55. And then they have a fanny pack as well with that same sort of material. And the fanny pack is, let's see, $45. All right, my friends, that's going to do it for today's video. I had a fun day. You know, I always enjoy getting the chance to come to Universal, walk around, enjoy myself, check on the new park updates and just see the progress live in person as the boats waving to us. <laughs> Always enjoy my time here at Universal. I will say I have not seen this park as crowded since Halloween Horror Nights back in October and during Halloween Horror Nights it's even busier than it is now 
it's just good that I see more and more people and I also talk to more and more of you guys who are visiting Universal saying this is your first time here and you're enjoying yourself. That is so good to hear. Can't wait for Epic Universe. And like I said, I will be back here to Universal very soon inside of Islands of Adventure. I also feel like it's time to visit Volcano Bay. Let me know down below in the comment section, what do you want to see from Volcano Bay? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up as it really does help with the channel in so many different ways. I love you guys so much. Please remember, it's nice to be nice on YouTube. I will see you in the next video. I'm out.